Hey there, my name's Daniel White. Some of you may know me as Dansky, and in this video, we're going to learn how to design a Bauhaus inspired homepage all in Adobe XD. And if you'd like to download any of the free fonts that have been brought back to life from the Bauhaus Dessau Foundation, there is a link in the video description. But anyway, let's jump into it. Rightio, so we're now in Adobe XD, and the first thing to do is go up to File, or from the welcome screen, just select a new artboard. And I'm working on a web 1920 by 1080 artboard. So you can click this preset here, or you can enter a custom size. And I've already created mine. And I'm going to double click on the text up here and give this artboard a name. So we'll call this home page. And next, what I'm going to do is grab the type tool and just start laying out everything on the page. So I'm going to type some text. I'm going to create some text links at the top. So we use the repeat grid tool and I can then just drag out and repeat those four links or so. And if I hover over the space in between each of these text objects, you can see it turns pink. Just click and drag to the left or right or up and down depending on how you're creating your grid and it will adjust the spacing in between. So we'll go for something like this and we'll move these to the top. And next I'll grab the type tool again and we'll type some text. Design is the intermediary between information and understanding. Super cool quote there. And we'll just center align this and we'll set the size to I think 24 and press return. Now I could manually drag this into the middle of the artboard and you can see those smart guides really nicely snap that in place. And you can also use the alignment options from the property inspector. So I can just click this here and it instantly snaps that to the center. So incredibly helpful. Now, rather than creating this text again, I can just go to edit, duplicate or edit, copy and paste. Just drag that up and we'll type a title. So we'll go with redefining design. Very cool. And we can just scale this up. And I'm just doing this at the moment with the default font, which on Mac is Helvetica. And what I'll do now is I've got the repeat grid group here, so I can double click to go inside and select this object here. Go to edit, copy. Just click anywhere to come out of that repeat grid group and go to edit and paste. And I can now drag this down and I'm going to use this as the text for the call to action. And I'm going to, again, centrally align this text and just snap that to the center and in fact you can drag over everything here and just snap that again just to double check that it is perfectly in the middle and it seems to be so that's fantastic okay so something else that I'm going to add is the logo so if I switch over to Illustrator I've got the original logo here and I've also got this version that I've taken out the box so I'm going to be using this one in this video so let's just select this go to edit and copy switch back into XD edit and paste so super easy to just copy and paste between illustrator and xd love it now we're going to scale it down holding shift of course if we don't hold shift it will skew out of proportion so let's keep shift held and we'll drag this up now i think what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to have the logo in the center rather than on the left or the right but i've got the repeat grid group here so i've used this repeat grid tool to create this group. And now I'm actually going to break it apart. So what I can do is go to object and ungroup grid. Now, the great thing about this is of course, it's no longer a repeat grid group. So you lose that flexibility, but it still keeps all of these objects. So sometimes you can use the repeat grid group tool to create the repeat grid group, lay everything out and then ungroup it. And then you can edit things uh, on a deeper level. So I'm just going to scale this down. We've got the B, for Bauhaus, let's make sure that lines up against these links. And we'll just manually the spacing. Yeah, looks pretty good. Maybe nudge this a few pixels here and there. And you can, of course, use the mouse or the arrow keys on your keyboard to move text around. So that's good. We've got our nav bar. Of course, we do need to change the text. So let's, uh, let's add a bit more text and create some more believable links. So we'll have about a product page reviews and contacts, oh, contact, there we go. 
And of course I will need to go and manually adjust the spacing now. But that's fine. That's the price we have to pay for a uh, centrally aligned custom navbar design. Never mind, it's definitely worth it. Okay, so spacing looks good. Now what I'm going to do is drag over everything because this is the nav bar, it's pretty much done now. So I'm going to go to object down to group. And then if this was a bit off center, I can again just use those alignment tools in the property inspector to align that centrally. Boom, it instantly snaps it to the middle. Right, next I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and we'll draw our box. And for now, I'm just gonna give this a fill color of a gray. And at the moment it's on top of the text. So I'm just going to go to object down to arrange and center back. And then I can click on the discover text and just change the fill color of that to white. And we'll position this very roughly. And again, we'll use that center align trick. And it already seems to be in the center, which is fantastic. So it's very good to work without any color, just use different shades of gray to represent hierarchy when laying up or wireframing your design because it keeps the focus on actually making sure the core structure of the page is great it works the flow works and then we can we can work on on adding the design and making it look amazing afterwards so something else i'm going to do is i'm going to have a background image in here as well and if i switch over you can see the image that i'm going to be using we have a funky looking chair and i'm going to add this as the background image and i'm going to have kind of like a v down here, so it's sort of pointing downwards rather than just a straight horizontal cut. So it's gonna be a bit more visually interesting. And for this, I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm going to create a custom shape. So I'm gonna click in the top left corner of the artboard. Now it does snap. You can see with that blue line, it snaps there, but I could hold down shift if I want to just doubly make sure that it's definitely straight. And just left click again. So the pen tool allows us to create custom shapes. So I'm just going to bring this down so it's going to be on an angle and bring this over here. And then as I come up, you can see it helps me line that up with the anchor point on the left. And then we're going to complete that shape. Now at the moment we have a border. Let's just deselect that, give that a fill and we'll go for a really, really light gray and just select this and go to object, arrange and center back. Okay, so fantastic. This is where our image is going to go. And I'm just going to double click to go inside the nav bar because remember that's a grouped object. So it's a lot easier than ungrouping and regrouping just to double click, go inside it. And we can then go edit, copy one of these links and then go to edit and paste. And this is going to be where we're going to add an Instagram handle here. So we'll just go with Bauhaus, all one word, Bauhaus inspired. And I happen to have the Instagram logo here ready to go. But of course, any logos and icons for social media platforms, you can find those in a vector format, whether it's EPS or SVG all online. And we'll scale this down and I'm just going to quickly eye drop a tool, the same gray here. And we'll scale this down nice and small. Line it up and then just hold shift and select both of these objects and go to object group. And then again, you guessed it, we're going to snap that into the center and then just manually make sure that it's vertically central within this space here. Okay, fantastic. So I think we can see our page coming together really nicely. What I'm gonna do next is start to add some of the creative now. We're gonna work on the fonts a bit more, introduce some color and our background image. So if I go up to file, down to import, and go into the images folder, I've got a photo. We've got a super funky yellow chair. And at the moment, this is on top of everything. So I'm going to go to object, arrange and send that to the back. Now this custom shape that we created with the pen tool is of course now on top, but the reason that we created this shape is we're going to use this as a mask. So at the moment we have this custom shape on top. So let's select that. And if we hold shift and select the image that's below, what we can do now is go to object and select mask with shape. Or if you're on a PC, just right click and the option should be here. So we'll go with mask with shape. 
and you can see it crops the background image to that custom shape and we can move this around now and we can double click to go inside that object and we can then go and adjust the crop if we want. And when you've done that, if you want to come out, just click anywhere around the outside and you'll jump back out. So now we've got the image in, I could double click, go inside, bring this down a little bit, maybe move this around, click to come out and then I can start to reposition the title text, the subtext and the link as well. Now in terms of colors, I've got this same yellow here that I've been using for a lot of things. So I'm going to select the call to action box and use that eyedropper tool to sample this color here. And in fact, if I go to the assets panel, I can actually add this as a color. And then if I did want to go and change this, at any point you can see it updates every instance of that. But of course that would go against the brand identity that we've created, but that's incredibly useful if that's something you'd like to do. However, with the asset panel still open, something we can do that is equally as incredibly useful is we can select the text we've already created and very quickly and easily change it. So if I just ungroup our social handle here and I can select the text, hold shift and select the text here, select the title text here and select the call to action text. All four of those pieces of text are selected and we can go to character styles and click the plus icon and it adds these in as four separate styles. And what we can do now is we can actually edit these from here and it will update every instance of that character style in the document. So what we can do now is if I select this one down here, you can see that is 20 points in size. So that would be this one. We can actually right click and go to edit. And because the text links at the top in our navigation are exactly the same font, we could go and change this. So we'll go to change this to something like Reros. And I think we'll go with rectangular, keep everything lowercase, but you can see it updates both those text elements at the top and at the bottom. So now what I can do is go and give this a color. So I think we'll go with 666666 and press return. So that's a really, really quick way to lay out your wireframe or your structure, just using the default font. And then you can select those fonts, add them to the character styles panel in the asset panel. And then what you can do is just go and change those fonts by right clicking and going to edit. So for example, for the main title, I could go and edit this from the character styles panel. So we could change this one here. I think we'll go with, well, let's start with Reros and see where we go. So we've got Reros, we've got quad quadratic there. And again, we can change that color to 666, 666. But of course we can actually add that color to our colors panel here. And exactly as we did with the other color, we can then change that as well. So if you have a large document, whether it's an app or a website with lots of different screens and lots of content, this is an incredibly awesome way to save a ton of time. So it's definitely worth utilizing the asset panel. So we've got some text here and we're going to change this one as well because this is the only instance of this text. I can just do it from the property inspector on the right. I think we'll change this to rectangular as well. And maybe just bring down the tracking. So that's the spacing in between all of the letters as a whole. So we'll drop that down to negative 10. And I think we'll do negative 20 on the title. Just bring those letters a little bit closer together. Something else I'm going to do now is because I've got this image in our custom shape, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and just create a new rectangle and just pick a very vibrant color for now. Now this is something I like to do when I'm creating layouts is just pick random vibrant colors and it just makes it a lot easier to lay the page out. Now what I could do is just manually drag this to the bottom down here so it snaps in place or I can just simply type a width of 1920 which is the width of our artboard and then align this to the bottom just by clicking that tool there. So those alignment tools really, really helpful. And we can go to object arrange send to back and now you can see it's behind the image and the custom shape that we created and we don't really want this to be this crazy vibrant red i think i'm going to go with something 
a little bit lighter. So I could use the eyedropper tool, an eyedropper tool this gray. So we kind of get this, this pretty cool sort of shadow effect here. But I think we'll go with something just a touch lighter so we can see the social link down here. And in fact, I can go and change this to the same color as well. So I did that very manually then. What I could do is select multiple assets or individual assets and just go right click on the color and apply that as a fill or a border respectively. And we can group these back together. And then just check. So you can see I very slightly nudged that into the center then. So this is something I do, I get in the habit of doing a lot is just using those alignment options. If I'm not sure, just to click something and just make sure it's definitely in the center. And last of all, we've got this link here. So we're gonna go with Reros rectangular for this as well. And just zoom in nice and close. Make sure we're centrally aligned. I might just nudge that down a tiny bit. There we go. And I can, of course, group this together as well. Now by holding shift, selecting both of those objects, go to object group and just check. Yep, we're still in the center. Fantastic. Now something else I'm going to do is the B at the top here could probably just do with a little bit more contrast from the background. So I'm going to close the asset panel, grab the rectangle tool, and again, create a rectangle and we'll drag it over the top half, just touching the piece of furniture as well. Now we don't need the border, but we do need the fill. So at the moment, this is a solid white fill. If we click this from the drop down menu, we can change solid color to two different gradients. We've got linear gradient, which goes from left to right or top to bottom and radial gradient, which goes towards the center or emanates outwards from the center. So we'll go with linear because we're going to go from top to bottom. And if I just select this point at the top here, we can pick a color as you can see. So I'm gonna go with white and just make sure the opacity on that slider is all the way at 100%. And then we can click the bottom point here and we can select a color for that as well. Now I'm also going to pick white, but I'm going to drop the opacity down to zero. So what I've done here is we now have white at the top and this graduates through to transparency or 0% opacity. And of course, it is on top of everything. So with that selected, let's go to Object, Arrange. And rather than Center Back, because that will send it behind everything, we're going to use Send Backward. And you've got the shortcut key here. So I'm just going to press the shortcut key until it's behind all of the text in the call to action. So you can see I went a little bit too far then. So I'm going to use that shortcut key to bring it forward. Fantastic. Now I can adjust the height of this. So I think I might have it so it's just touching the chair. So it's like a highlight up here and it just creates a bit more contrast, particularly for the logo and the links. And it also just lightens up the image overall. And I'm going to drop that opacity down. So this is how it looked before. And you can see now I've just brightened it up a little bit. So I think we'll go for about, we'll go for about 60%. So there we go before. And now we've just created a little bit more contrast. And I think one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select this text here. And if I zoom in, I'm going to pick another font. So we go with Zants. Just maybe increase the size a little bit. You can, of course, grab this point here and quickly and easily adjust the size as well. Just double check that that is in the center and then select all of these objects and just adjust that positioning. And then maybe just go up here, double click and go inside and just close up some of these gaps just so these links are a little bit closer together. So you can see that we started with a rough wireframe just laying the page out. We've now added the creative, the styling, the fonts. We've set everything up in the asset panel and it's really just a case of refining that until you get your finished design. And something I have just noticed is this chair here doesn't quite line up with this social link. You can see it's a little bit off center. Even though the social link is in the middle, what I'm going to do is zoom in here on this point, double click, and I can now double click on the original shape as well. So this is the mask. And I'm gonna pull this to the right a little bit, this anchor point. 
And I can also click on the image as well, move that to the right a little bit and zoom back out. And even though this is technically in the center, I'm going to offset this ever so slightly. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because whether this is here or here, it's quite difficult by eye to tell if it's in the center because there is so much space on the left and so much space on the right. However, something like this, because we do have this chair that is central and it meets at this central point, it's a lot easier to notice that and see it as a little bit strange, like it doesn't line up. So if I make sure that this lines up, the chair lines up, the point lines up, we're all good in this space. I think it's gonna be very difficult for someone to notice that we might be five or 10 pixels out on the left or the right. So that's just a little detail to sometimes be aware of, but there we go. We've designed a Bauhaus inspired homepage all in Adobe XD.